Hey everyone, my name is Kara, and today I'll be showing you how to get the Secret Slime Serpent Mount from soloing Heroic Plaguefall. So, this mount is really easy to get, and all you have to do is solo the Plaguefall dungeon in Maldrax on Heroic difficulty or higher. So, the mount was first discovered by Hunter soloing Plaguefall back in patch 9.0.5, and previously you could skip the first 2 out of the 4 total bosses in Plaguefall. However, in a recent hotfix by Blizzard at the start of 9.1, you are now required to kill all the bosses of Plaguefall to number 1, complete the dungeon as a whole, and number 2, to be able to get the Slime Serpent mount uh, NPC to appear at the end of the dungeon and, you know, click on the NPC to be able to receive the mount. Now, I've heard some people say that they could possibly ask for help on the first few bosses and maybe solo the third or the fourth boss. And I did try that tactic as well with a couple friends, and it didn't work out. The Slime Serpent NPC did not appear at the end of the, dun at the, end of the dungeon, even if my friend left the... Uh, dungeon after I killed the third and fourth boss solo, thus requiring to fully solo the instance from start to finish. So with that out of the way, let's start. And the first thing you want to do is to prepare a couple of things before heading on to the dungeon. So the first is I highly recommend doing this on a tank class or a tank spec. I ran this dungeon on a Vengeance Demon Hunter with an eye level of 235, but plate wearers will definitely have an easier time as well as classes with self-healing and off-healing. Similarly, classes with pets may be able to do this as well, as a hunter was the first one to discover this, um, but I'm unsure about cloth wearers like warlocks or mages because they also have low defensive stats, so I'm a bit unsure about that they're able to survive through some bosses, but if you have the right eye level, you should be able to do it and feel free to try it out as well. Um, I would primarily recommend you to have an eye level of 225 or higher, just so the dungeon won't be that much of a pain and you'll be able to breeze through most of the trash and bosses as well. The second thing I would recommend is to bring invisibility pots, the potion of hidden spirit. So, or you know, use your stealth abilities when possible. This isn't mythic plus, so you don't need to clear um, or reach a certain trash percentage. However, I will be recommending certain trash packs that you'd want to clear just to make the boss fights easier overall. The third recommendation is to get the Purifying Drought Treasure from Bastion. Now, this treasure is able to clear any debuff, much like the Kyrian Steward Covenant ability. However, do note that I would recommend that you picking up this treasure even if you are a Kyrian. I'll explain why later on. So now let's get into the meat of what you have to do and the actual boss guides. So the first boss is, is called Globgorg, and it's essentially a giant slime humanoid. What you want to do is to use your Potion of Hidden Spirit or Invis till the first trash which can detect stealth, Kill that trash, then clear the room of the slime puddles and the two sl medium slime humanoids on the side. Keeping them there during the boss fight will be catastrophic, as you will just take too much damage from the adds plus the boss. Now, as a tank, this fight is very simple. Just keep DBSing the boss till it dies. However, it will occasionally regenerate health from the small slimes going to it. And if you have a major root or CC ability like Mass Entanglement for Druids or Ring of Peace for Monks, um, to stop these slimes from getting to the boss, and that would really, really help. But if you can't, it's fine, because you will eventually kill the boss anyways, and it doesn't really regenerate enough health um, before you can DPS down and kill the boss. After the boss dies, you would want to invis again, using your potion or you know stealth ability, to reach the Tentacle Gauntlet. And at the end of the Tentacle Gauntlet is an NPC called Virulax Blightweaver. So what you want to do is to be able to get through the gauntlet, um, make sure to not stand in the green swirly puddles, which are bombs, because they can potentially kill you if you are undergeared, and also make sure to kill the uh, slime tentacles that, that arise from the water. So once you're done with that, clear the entire... Um, so once you're done with that, reach the end of the gauntlet, kill the relaxed blight weaver, and um, you will see a large area where the boss is jumping around. So what you want to do is be able to clear the entire room by taunting adds to a corner and then killing them so as to not aggro the boss, because the boss will be jumping around um, even before you aggro the boss, and that can potentially... Um, and you may potentially aggro the boss, and doing so will you know, make it catastrophic for you because you will be fighting adds alongside the boss again. So what you would want to do is clear the entire room of adds, make sure to see, um, um, taunt them to one side, and then um, go to the other side and clear the trash from that side. Make sure to do this because the boss will be also jumping around the entire room during the fight, so you'd want to have as much space as possible. Uh, so for this boss, Dr. Ikus, this is where the purifying drought comes in. Throughout the fight, Dr. Ikus will place a stacking dot on you called Slime Injection. Now, if you have a healer that is usually dispellable, or that has a dispellability in a usual dungeon run, it will be fine. But since you are soloing this, you will need the treasure. From friends that have, that have attempted this, the Kyrian Steward and any self-dispel abilities do not work. Hence why this treasure is so, so vital. You should cleanse yourself once you reach about a maximum of 3 or, uh, three or 4 stacks. And in return, the slime injection will spawn adds equal to the number of stacks cleansed. So if you like, you cleanse 4 stacks, then 4 little slimes will spawn. They aren't really a big deal though, so just clear them off the boss and it will be all good. 
The other mechanic that you want to take note of during the fight is the Plague Bomb. In most cases, um, in most dungeon runs or Mythic Plus runs, you'd want all DPS to focus on the Plague Bomb because letting it go off would be an instant wipe. But since you are alone, and this is the heroic version, you do not need to kill the bomb. In most cases, you can take damage from it and not die, and it would be safe to use shields or healing like Divine Shield for example, or Fell Devastation in my case, to heal you back up and keep you sustained. Just rinse and repeat this process and kill the boss. Um, the, the bomb didn't wipe me and the bomb didn't really deal a lot of damage so i hope it doesn't deal that i don't think it will heal uh, deal a lot of damage for you guys either but just to make sure um make sure to reserve your shields and healing just for that uh, just for that part of the boss fight you can then hand to the third boss domina venom blade where you can skip some trash along the plague pool area but when you get to the boss floor uh boss floor you'd want to clear the side trash because they deal a lot of damage when engaged with the boss as well as you need to use the space because of a mechanic the boss does which I will be explaining later on. After clearing the trash, engage the boss and watch out for it when it spawns the webs around the floor. You'd want to uh, go to like jump to these webs or go to these webs to expose the ads lying in hiding. Because if you don't do this, you will receive constant damage as you see like there's certain like little things jumping to, to me. That actually hurts. So make sure to clear the ads by cleaving them off the boss whenever the webs show up, and then just DPS down the boss um, as much as you can, and then eventually the boss will die. For the last boss, Margrave Stradama. You'd want to clear the entire room of ads to make the boss spawn during the boss fight, and you have to watch out for a couple of things. So the first is that the boss will spawn an ad called the Malignant Spawn. When this ad comes up, you'd want to kill it, and when fighting it, it will leave a green circle around, uh, uh, like around the area. What you want to do is to go in that green circle when fighting Margrave's Rudama as well as when fighting the Malignant Spawn, as if you don't, it will um, you know, launch out damage for the entire party in a normal dungeon run, or you know, for you in this regard, you know, damage which cannot be mitigated so make sure to stand in that circle and second is to dodge the slime tentacles when the boss phases because those tentacles deal massive instant damage that you can't like leech off of or that you um that, that you don't have any like uh like any other ad to like uh, to get health back from so make sure to use your defensive as, defensive as well if you like things like divine shield for example or extra healing like fleshcraft during this time in case you do get hit by the tentacles the other ads don't really matter. If you can kill them while avoiding the slimes, then good. If not, then just keep focusing on surviving. Just to, just make sure to kill the malignant spawn. That's the most important ad to make uh, to kill when it does come up. Keep repeating the process because the boss will phase multiple times into the uh, into the uh, into the slime pool and avoid the tentacles. Kill the malignant spawn when it comes up until you kill the boss. And after that, after you kill the boss, head back to the small room and take the portal out to the slime pool area. And you should see the slime serpent NPC which when clicked on will award you the mount. And that's how you solo Heroic Platefall. Honestly, it's not too difficult. It is just a bit time consuming, took me about an hour. But if you take note of the mechanics and time your cooldowns properly, then it'll definitely, definitely be a walk in the park. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. If you want to be informed when my, ne when my next WoW guide comes out, hit that notification bell or follow me on Twitter and Facebook. So thanks for watching guys and happy mount hunting. Hope you guys get your own Slime Serpent mount as well.